All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the next part of the lecture. Now we're going to be talking about single and double, repl double replacement reactions and how to figure out how they go and what drives them and all this other stuff. Okay, so the thing you're going to need for sure, which in any chemistry class you really should need, it, is your periodic table, especially the one that I gave you. It has a list of a bunch of stuff on it. So there's two things you need to do. Um, first thing you need to see is see if you can find the activity series. And the activity series is kind of in the middle pages, and it says it right here. Activity series for metals and nonmetals. Notice the big list. It's, it's a, basically what it is is a ranking, okay, where the most um, active metals on top and the least active metals on the bottom. In other words, chemically reactive. In other words, they want to react. And then the very list on the bottom here says the most reactive with the least reactive on the bottom. All right. This is going to help you figure out um, if the reaction will happen or if it won't happen. All right. So, activity series, it's for a single replacement. It's for the single replacement reaction. And what it tells you is um, how chemically active elements are. Okay, whoops. How, chem how chemically active, sorry, it's not very good spelling, elements are. All right, and this is going to be important because it's going to tell you if the reaction is going to take place or not because sometimes there might have two things you put together and they might not react. And the question is, well, why? Why don't they react? Well, because it's not more chemically active than what it should be. So let's take a look at a chemical, let's take a look at a single replacement here. Here's a single replacement reaction. How do I know that? Well, I have a compound and I have an element. So that tells you right away it's a single replacement reaction. So now here's the trick. For single replacement reactions, the lone element, in other words, this F, has to be more chemically active than what it's trying to replace. In this case, it's the Cl, in order for the reaction to go. And if it's higher on the periodic table, in other words, up higher, then it will. If it's lower, the reaction won't happen. So let's take a look at our activity series here. So we got fluorine and we got NaCl. Flu I mean, sorry, fluorine and chlorine. Fluorine, which is the lone element, is higher than chlorine, so therefore the reaction will take place. All right. So then I fin say um, NaF plus Cl two. That's it. It just the, all the activity series tells you is the reaction will happen. If this wasn't higher, you would just put Nr no reaction if it wasn't higher. All right. Let's try another one with, instead of using the nonmetals, let's use metals. So now we have copper and zinc chloride. All right, so now, again, same rule applies for activity series. If copper is higher than zinc, the reaction will take place. If it's not, you put no reaction. So the lone element has to be higher. So copper and zinc, let's take a look at our activity series here. Let's see, where is Here's zinc. Let's see, and copper's way down here. So copper is not higher, okay? So copper is the lone element. If the lone element's not higher, the reaction won't happen. So you look at this and say, well, if I put these two compounds together, that's awesome, but really, no reaction because copper is not higher than zinc. Remember, metals replace metals, just like over here. A non-metal replaces a non-metal. That's how you gotta, you gotta remember that stuff. So, using the activity series, it'll help tell you if a reaction will take place or not take place. All right? It tells you what's the driving force. Well, it's all about chemical activity. Which one wants to react more? Which one's more chemically um, active? All right? So, that activity series goes for just single replacement reactions. Remember, a single replacement reaction is going to be when you have an element, element, and a compound. Element and a compound. Those are your telltale signs. All right? Now, solubility rules. Solubility rules go specifically for double replacements. Oops, double replacement reactions. And what they tell you is if it's soluble or not. So, soluble, which usually means it's going to be aqueous, in other words, that is a stay dissolved in water, or insoluble, which you label in a reaction if it's insoluble. Solid. It formed a solid. This is going to be like a precipitation reaction where all of a sudden you'll combine two clear, two clear liquids and you'll get like a yellow product. All right, things like that. So, solubility rules 
It's this big thing. Ooh. Can't quite see that, can we? Right here. Okay, so solubility rules table. It's right next to the activity series and the thing that I organized for you guys. And how you look this stuff up is you basically kind of look backwards. All right, and I'll explain what I mean here in a second. So let's look at a reaction and see how this kind of flows. So we know here we have a double replacement reaction. Okay, we have BaCl2 and H2SO4. Well, double replacement. The first one switches with the first one, or metals switch with metals, however you want to view it. So the Ba is now going to go with the SO4, and that's the right formula, because these are both charges of 2. And then the HCl goes there. Alright, now, here's how it works out. Once you got your products, once you figured out what, what gets produced, okay, otherwise they might be given to you, a question will be asked like, which solid got formed, or which, what is the insoluble product, or which one stayed aqueous, things like that. All right. So, here's how it works out. Barium chloride, we want to figure out what state is it in. Is it solid, liquid, is it dissolved or not dissolved? Okay, soluble or insoluble. So in this case, because we're usually doing this stuff in water, you look it up backwards. All right. So instead of looking up the, for the BA, you look up the CL. Okay, let's look up chlorines. Let's see if I can get this on the page. There. So, look up chlorines. Here's chlorines. It says all chlorides are soluble except for these ones. Alright? So we have BACL. BACL, that means it's soluble. So what I put here is I put AQ. That means it's soluble. Let me zoom in on that. Okay? My great handwriting again. All right, AQ, that means it stays soluble. If it was insolu insoluble, you put S, okay? Next one, we look up H2SO4, okay? So we look up SO4s here. Here's SO4s. It says all sulfates are soluble except for these ones. And we have H2SO4, and that's not one of the exceptions, so therefore this one is still AQ. Now we gotta look up these ones, okay? So, barium sulfate and HCl. So let's look up BASO4. So remember, look up the back one, SO4. Look for SO4 here, here it is, SO4. All sulfates are soluble except for, oh, there's the exception, BASO4. So that because this tells you it's soluble and it's an exception, that means it's insoluble. So instead of putting AQ, I put an S. So that's my solid or my precipitate that gets formed, all right? And then you look up HCl, Cl, all solubles are HCl here. All are, all are soluble except for these ones, and HCl is one of those. AQ. So really what we did is we identified the solid that got formed in the reaction. Because lots of times in these reactions, double replacement reactions, lots of times what you'll have is you have one that stays in solution, in other words, stays dissolved, and one that will uh, precipitate out, okay, which will form the solid. And will you ever have two solids that get formed? Not likely. All right. Usually, you'll 99 percent of the time in this class, it'll be a sol one of them that's just going to be a solid. So, really, what the solubility rules tells you is which one is going to precipitate out, or which one's going to form a solid. Let's try another one to make sure we know what we're doing. Here's my other example: double replacement reaction, two compounds. All right, use our solubility rules. And here we go, NaOH. So remember, we gotta look at it backwards. Look at the back half first, the OH. So let's look for OH here. Oh, here's OH. So it's mainly insoluble washes. All hydroxides are insoluble, except for those of group 1A, and with this, and that, and that, and that. So that means that these are all going to be soluble. Well, what do we have here? We have NaOH. Is Na part of group one on the periodic table? That would be the question. And you'd say, well, here's group one, there's Na, so yeah. So it's actually an exception to that rule, so it's actually going to be AQ. Then H2SO4, well, we found out over on this one, right here in the last one we did, that one's AQ, so we don't have to look up that again, little time saver there. Okay, switch them. Now we get 
Na2SO4 reacts with, whoops, there we go, makes, um, what do we got, HOH. So, use our solubility rules again. Na2SO4. So, here we go, SO4s, all sulfates are soluble except for these ones. And Na is not in there, so that means it's AQ. HOH, we look up OH, it says all hydroxides are so insoluble except for group 1A elements in these ones. So is hydrogen in group 1A? And yes it is. So this is AQ2. Alright, so now here's a good example. Everything's aqueous, in other words, it stays dissolved. That means if you combine these, they might react, but you won't see anything. All right, it would stay, you'd have two clear liquids and they'd stay clear. You wouldn't see anything precipitate out, no cloudiness, no color change, things like that. So keep those in mind. So activity series tells you how, for single replacements, which ones are going to switch or which ones aren't going to switch. Remember, the, the lone element has to be higher. And then the solubility rules, well, the solubility rules tells you which one is soluble, which one's not soluble. In other words, which one's going to form a solid, which one's not going to form a solid. And the one that is insoluble should be your solid. Everything that is soluble should be AQ next to it. All right? So, hope this helps. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later. We'll do a lot of these in class. Have a good one.